Hey team, welcome back. This video is all geared up dwarf mages. So let's look at the two styles of dwarf mages. If you are a dwarf mage, you are technically an extroverted thinking dominant. So this means you're an ETJ in the MBTI style. So this means that you lead with extroverted thinking. That's how you prefer to exist in the world. And you support that by gathering information internally through an introverted perceiving function as your auxiliary function. After that, your third function is extroverted perceiving and your fourth is introverted feeling. Okay, so dwarf mages enchant their weapons with a warrior or hunter enchant. In this video, we'll look at the differences. So first of all, dwarf mages, extroverted thinkers, some keys to them are they make new effective systems. So they plan ways to get good results, good to them, like um, effective results. They make it happen. They're not about waiting around. They're ready to just move things in the environment, move people and just go, 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 get something to happen. Kind of similar to extroverted sensing, but this is a judging function. This makes decisions. Um, they want external proof and validation. They want measurable results. Um, the percentage that it has gotten better or how much money you've made or like just progress you've made, achievements in video games, um, kind of completionist type thing. They value competence. So if you are not doing your job properly, then there's probably somebody better that can do it and they'll look for it. Um, this isn't trying to be mean or anything like that. That's just how they look at it. They value the logic truth and not the, like, the feelings or whatever involved as a preference. Of course, there are feelings and logic in everybody and they put things in their place. So like I was just saying, they move things around to get results if they need to, and that's just how it is. So dwarf mages are uh, like geomancers. They have these rune stones. They physically craft the environment and uh, summon meteors and stuff like that, earth elementals, in order to get their results to attack the situation. And their enchantment condensed version is of effectiveness, which means your attacks are more effective. You take a more effective, focused um, approach to attacking situations. What works, what gets things done. So if you are an ETJ, a dwarf mage, I'm talking to you you still lead with this dwarf mage aspect that we just talked about, but all that nice stuff that dwarf mages like to do and like to focus on means that you are not looking at this other side and that other side is the internal introverted feeling. Okay, the squishy, squishy stuff. And so all of that gets repressed and it gets pushed into this enchantment for your armor. Okay, armor is a love-hate relationship. You know, you need it, you want it, um, but you don't want to take damage. You don't want to have to use it. You don't want um, to people. You don't want people to take advantage of it as well. So, for you as an ETJ, you could maybe um, overemphasize your internal feelings and feel that nobody else really you know notices how much you try and you kind of have this martyr type feeling about it or you could uh, you could underemphasize your feelings and just ignore them because it's difficult to look at and you have more confidence in this external logical realm Okay, so let's look at ESTJ. 
So extroverted thinking, you make decisions first and foremost in the world and you support that, you support those decisions through a learning process, an information gathering process called introverted sensing technically. This is that elf warrior tanky type aspect and we call it experience. So you look into your past experiences and what actually happened and you use that to kind of arrange your information in your head and then make a decision with the empirical logical effectiveness choice. And that is the best way for you to approach most situations. Um, of course, you're going to bounce back and forth and everybody uses all these preferences, but are all these cognitive functions, but you have preferences. And your main one, your auxiliary function is this introverted sensing. So as much as you can try to look into your past, look into how other people have, um, you know, done things and approach situations and take that, condense it and use it to make a long focused goal. Okay, something that's going to withstand and be able to be reused if you need to, just a nice proper system. Um, but it takes time. It's kind of difficult to do to introspect and stop making decisions, stop influencing the world and just, you know, go over information in your head. So a lot of times you're going to bounce over to your offhand and this is called exploration. It's extroverted intuition. And what that is, is making quick connections in an abstract way in the environment. So it's the mirror opposite of introverted sensing. So if you're always looking to what's going on in the environment and trying to make these abstract connections and kind of predict what is happening, um, you're not going to have as much range, right? You're looking for those quick fixes and trying to make quick decisions to explore and act in the environment, in the world. And that causes you some problems. Sometimes you just get a little over distracted, right? But the best thing you can do is to look into your past and remember what really happened and use that to fuel your decisions into the future. So kind of build a base, right? A secure base. So ESDJ, this is a quote from Michelle Obama. Uh, this is pretty politically charged and kind of strong, but I think it kind of stressed the different functions going at it. So what we need right now is leadership. We need people with judgment. We need decent people, people with common sense, people with strong family values. Right. So um, leadership could be extroverted thinking, you know, proper judgment, logical judgment is also extroverted thinking. And then I want to say introverted sensing is more talking about these decent people with common sense, right? They're not too spacey. They know how to do things that life requires and people with strong family values. Introverted sensing stereotypically focuses on, you know, building that base and strong family values and tradition are part of that. So in the United States, it's 8.7% of the population that are ESTJs, according to Myers-Briggs. Next up, ENTJ. So ENTJs are a little variant, a little different from the ESTJs. And this time your main hand is enchanted with vision. So what vision is, is introverted intuition, technically, or like an elf hunter. And elf hunters have this, you know, single target, slow approach to situations. 
and they're tracking, they're following, and they're just pacing and planning their shot, right? And so for you, with your main hand, with this vision enchantment, you, know, you can see the world with different perspectives, okay? You can kind of like rotate it mentally in your mind as a model if you need to or whatever, or kind of put yourself in different people's shoes. But you're more focused on the environment, the logical side, right? So what vision is going to do for you is it's going to give you more range, basically. So just like introverted sensing gave you more range because it's, it's building on your past, um, introverted intuition does the same. But this kind of, I would say this is further out and this is a little more abstract, of course, right? So that's introverted intuition. Um, the other side, the easier one for you to access would be your tertiary function, extroverted sensing. And extroverted sensing, we call presence here, and this is a dwarf warrior style. So ready to just go out and start beating on things and see what happens. Um, so also again, similar to extroverted intuition, except this time you're focused on the real concrete things learning from those and then making a measurable um, decision to get results. Whereas ESTJ was more um, abstract, right? Not quite grounded in reality um, through the tertiary function, the offhand. So um, if you stay too much in the present moment, you're not going to get range for your systems and abilities and it's going to make you make more I guess efficient systems and not effective systems so kind of like putting a band-aid on the situation instead of fixing the whole situation before people get injured right so try to stay away from presence when you can you know, play with it um, if you get stressed out, you know, go for a run or something like that. Do something physical, listen to music even, whatever. Something to engage your senses. And that goes with, you know, everyone for their tertiary function. If you get stressed out, try to use that to get you back into the same attitude, the same elf or dwarf mindset that you are naturally in. So ENTJs, this is a quote from David Letterman. Nothing, believe me, nothing is more satisfying to me personally than getting a great idea and then beating it to death. Okay, so um, I thought this quote was interesting. I think, you know, you could assume that introverted intuition is connecting to the, the great idea, whatever that great idea is, something that has to come out. You know, introverted intuition ruminates and thinks about this idea for a long time and then eventually it has to come out and when it comes out david letterman beats it to death and <laughs> uses it over and over and over again uh in the united states it's 1.8 percent of the population that are entjs according to myersbriggs.org so that was a look at the two dwarf mage styles um, do you know any dwarf mages? I know a few and I'm glad now that I know how they work uh, Before when I didn't there for example ESTJ is the opposite of INFP, right? So there were a lot of issues with my ESTJ friend when I first met him um, And so you might have someone like that in your life too that you just don't quite understand they kind of rub you the wrong way but it's because you're thinking in a different language than them and there's nothing wrong with either one but knowing it and practicing it is very important very worth it so keep at it so this has been a look at all geared up dwarf mages and the two styles as always thank you very much for watching good luck have fun